In this video tutorial, we'll take a look at the new scriptable tools framework in Unreal 5.2, so we can make trash like this. As a quick introduction to the scriptable tools framework, we're going to create a really cool and simple physics scattering tool in Unreal. I'll be able to then just left click and drop these randomized static meshes into my scene and have physics drive where they land and where they sit. So this will allow us to be able to set dress our scenes much easier and scatter garbage throughout our scenes like I'm doing here. And once we kind of make enough of this kind of garbage scattered all over the place and we want to turn this into something that we can actually keep in our scene, we could wait a bit for the pieces to settle. We might have to delete some pieces away, but we could take this then and we'll go over how we'll be able to convert it into a blueprint asset where all these scattered meshes are stored as instanced static meshes and can easily just be added into our scene. To begin, we'll create a brand new scene and we'll go to Edit, Plugins, and make sure that we have our Scriptable Tools plugins loaded. So you can search Scriptable Tools and enable those plugins. Once we've done that, we can start creating our blueprint that will be used to drive our Scriptable tool. So we're going to go down here in our content browser and right click and go to Editor Utilities and create an Editor Utility Blueprint. This is a blueprint that's meant to be used in the editor only. And once we've created that, we're going to have to choose a parent class. There's a lot here to select from, but we're going to search for scriptable. So scriptable. And you'll see there's a bunch here. If you want to have a click drag tool, an interactive tool, we're going to do one that's really simple. We just want an action to happen on a single click. So we're going to do an editor scriptable single click tool and click select and then we'll name our blueprint and maybe we'll name it something like bp underscore tool underscore physics drop we'll open up that blueprint and it'll look like an empty blueprint but there's a couple things to take note of sometimes there'll be variables that might be hidden you can click on this gear icon and say show inherited variables and you'll see some that show up here we won't go into those we won't talk about them, but sometimes there are hidden variables. That's how you can show them. Now, what we want to do is create an event for when we click. So on our functions here, we can right click and do an override function and do on hit by click. You can also add the event manually in your graph. Now we have this event that triggers something when we click. So what we're going to do is when we click on our scene, we have to get what we clicked on, what geometry we clicked on in the scene. And to do that, we're going to do a line trace. So we'll drag this execution pin out and do a line trace by channel. And we'll just create that. And a line trace by channel will have a starting point where the ray begins, an ending point where the trace or the ray ends. And it will check between in those two points, did that ray or a line trace hit something? If it does, it will be able to return us a location or values that we can use. So the start point will be our camera. The end point will be a distance in our camera's direction far, far away. So we're going to use that click position to determine our starting point to trace from. Now we can't just connect these up because this type is a ray structure. So what we have to do is drag out our click position and do a break input device ray. Now we have a world ray, which still we cannot connect up to a start point. But what we can do on this world ray is right click on that pin and split the structured pin. And now we have the origin or the start point of our click and the direction that click is also pointing in. So now we can set our world ray origin as our starting point. Now I'll make a bit more room here. So I'm just going to maximize this screen so we can see everything and leave a lot of space in between here. Maybe make use of those reroute nodes to keep our networks just a little bit cleaner. And what I'm going to do now is take the world ray direction and the end point is going to be wherever the start point is, but then just a far, far distance in that same direction. So that's kind of what we want to do. If this is our camera, and our start point is here, our end point wants to be in that same direction, just really far away, like maybe a thousand units in that direction. So to do that, what we're going to do is take the world ray direction and we're going to drag it out and just multiply it by a very large number. Now it gives us X, Y, and Z. We can right click on this pin here and just make it a float. So it just combines all of it to one value and we'll just set it to a thousand. So we're taking the direction, timesing it by a thousand. And then finally, 
what we're going to end up doing is adding our world rate origin, adding this on top. So it's starting at the world rate origin, ending this many units in that direction that's facing further away in the distance. So the next thing to do is we can drag this out, do a add, and we're going to add our multiplied thing here. And actually we could just connect that up to this reroute pin, make things a little bit cleaner. And that will be our endpoint. And that's really it. Easy. Now, if we want to test this out, we want to make sure we have a way of debugging if, in case of things go wrong. So I'm going to click down on this advanced tab. I'm going to set the draw time to three and turn the draw debug type for duration. So for three seconds, it will show a little red marker at where the line trace hits something. And if it hits something, it'll go red. If it doesn't, it'll be green. And that way we can just troubleshoot to make sure this kind of graph or network that we set up actually works. So let's click compile, save, and go test it out. How do we actually test that out? Well, what we have to do first is give this tool a name. So I'm just going to go up here to where it says class defaults, and we're going to click on that and give it a tool name. We're going to call it physics drop. Once I've done that, we'll be able to see it show up in our interface because this parent class, this blueprint is editor, editor scriptable single click tool. So it'll automatically show up. So we just need to go compile, save, make sure we have a name here. And then inside of Unreal, we're just going to go to our modes here and drop down to scriptable tools. There it is. There's our physics tool. We can click on it and then we can click on our scene. And there we go. There's our line trace is tracing those lines from the camera view and they're hitting the ground. So our line trace all works. So now we can get the location of where that line trace collides with the ground. So I'll click compute, complete. I'll go back to selection mode and I'll open up our blueprint. And the next thing that we're going to do is get the location of where our click hit on that surface. So to do that, we're going to go over here to where it says out hit, and we're going to do a break hit result. It'll give us this list that we can expand with all this different information of where that ray or where that line trace hit something. So we can get the location by using this. And what we're going to do is spawn a item at that location. So we're going to go here and take our execution pin, drag it out, do a spawn actor from class. The class type will be static mesh actor and the spawn transform. Where does it spawn is going to be our location here. So we can just take our location, connect it up like that. Now we probably don't want to connect it up to exactly the location where we clicked. We want it to fall a little bit. So maybe we'll add a bit of extra height in the Z axis. So we're going to go here and instead of just connecting it directly up to the location, what we're going to do is a bit of a add. So we're going to drag this out and do add. And on Z axis, maybe we'll add like 50 or 80 in height. So it, it takes that point of where we clicked, but then it adds a little bit of height upwards, 80 units upwards. That's where it spawns the mesh. So it has a bit of time to fall. So that will become our new spawn transform, our location of the hit plus 80 units on Z axis, up and down axis. And that's pretty much it. Now, how do we spawn a mesh? Well, we can just add a set static mesh after this. So I'll go over here to this execution pin, drag it out, do a set static mesh. And then we're going to have to set this all up. So what mesh is it going to be? What's the target going to be? Well, target's actually just going to be our spawn actor static mesh. And then what mesh do we want to use? So we can click down here and choose a mesh. Maybe I'll just choose this cube for now and that's it. And we'll test this out to make sure it works. So I'm going to click compile, save, and we'll go test this out. So if we go back here, go back to our scriptable tools, click on our physics tool and left click. There we go. We're dropping a cube 80 units above where we clicked. Perfect. So that all works. So I'm just going to delete all these cubes so we don't have our scene piling up and I'll go back into that blueprint. This is all good. But if we want physics to work, we have to make sure those objects are set to movable because they might be spawning a static. 
So the next thing that we're going to have to do is make sure we set the mobility. So we're going to leave a little bit of room here in between, and we're going to add another node in between here called set mobility. We're going to set the mobility to movable, connect the target to our return value here. So now we have something, we organize this a little bit like this. And now we're going to make sure that all those objects that get spawned have movable mobility so they can actually simulate with physics. And then finally, at the end here, we're also going to have to turn on simulate physics. So I'll drag out this execution pin, do a set simulate physics, simulate true, turn that on, connect our target to our static mesh component here. And again, maybe to organize this, we do a little bit of a reroute here just to keep our nodes clean and organized because it's going to get crazy later once we add more static meshes. So there we go. That's our whole blueprint network. And we'll compile, save, and go test this out again. So we'll go here and we'll click on our physics tool. And what's up? It's spawning our items, but they're not falling with physics. This is because physics is only going to work when the game loop is running. And by default in the editor, the game loop is not running. So we're going to go into simulate mode. We're going to click on these three little dots here and we're going to go to simulate. And now it's going to be in simulation mode. And now if I click on this tool, it will drop with physics. Now, the only problem is, you know, I can drop them on top of each other and they'll tumble around. But when we exit the simulate mode, all those items that were created disappear. So how do we deal with that? Well, I'm going to show you how you deal with that. But first of all, let's make this a bit more interesting. Let's add more variation of items that it can randomly select from instead of just a cube. And then we'll take a look at how we can properly turn those meshes that fall with physics into something that will retain in our scene after we leave that simulate mode. So going back to our blueprint, I'm going to go in here and instead of spawning that boring cube, I'm going to spawn some simple trash objects I have here, soft drink cup, and then I'm going to duplicate this static mesh. And I'm going to select a different one. So I'll do soft drink and maybe this ramen cup that I have. And then also maybe what else do I got in here? One of these food containers. So I'll do three things. Now, how can we randomly ultimate, alternate between these three different items? Well, what we'll do is we'll create a bit of a, a kind of randomization. We can right click and do a random integer in range. And it allows us to specify a range between zero and maybe three, or technically two, because it starts at zero. So that would be zero, one, two. So we could do that. And what we'll do is like an if statement where if it's zero, it will spawn this item. If it's one, it will spawn this item. If it's two, it will spawn this item. How do we do that? Well, we could do it with a branch, but that would be a lot of work because there'd be multiple conditions. So an easier way is to drag this out and do a switch on int. And it will allow us to switch and add pins for zero, one, and two, and now it will specify this will happen if it's zero, this will happen if it's one, this will happen if it's two, and it's way easier than looping a bunch of branches or something together. So we're going to put this after set mobility. So I'm going to make a bit of room here. So we will set mobility. Then we will do this switch on int. If it's zero, it will be this one. If it's one, it will be this. If it's two, it will be this. And then default, we could just leave it to one of them just in case. And that's really it. And now we'll compile. Oh, we get an error. One thing I missed, target we have to connect. So connect up the targets to this static mesh component here. And then compile, save, and we'll go test it out. And one last thing, we also need to hook up this very last pin to our set simulate physics. Don't forget that as well. So now we have a graph that's something like this, getting a little bit bigger. 
So compile, save, and we'll go simulate mode. Click on our physics tool, click, 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 and it's dropping those items. So now we can drop all those items in a giant pile like this, and that's all working great. Now I'm gonna turn off this little trace debug since we don't need that anymore. So I'm just gonna click stop and quickly go do that. So I'll go in here to line trace by channel, debug, draw debug, none, compile, save, and let's try this again. So say we play, we use our tool, scattered a bunch of pile of debris or trash, and maybe I'm really happy with this and I wanna actually put this into my scene but when I leave simulation mode, it disappears. Well, what we're gonna do is select all those items that we wanna keep. So all these static mesh actors that were created in the outliner, I'm gonna select them all. I'm gonna to go to actor, merge actors, batch. It will hide all them and it will create a new item called actor zero. That actor zero has all these items as instanced static meshes. So it's taking one mesh and instancing it to all these different locations. So they're not just duplicates. And what we'll do is we'll click on this icon right here. And I'm just gonna highlight that because it might be a bit hard to see this icon right here, like this icon there. It's hard to miss, or actually what I was saying, easy to miss, it's so small. And what that's going to do is convert this. You can see if I hover over it, it says converts this actor into a reusable blueprint class. So if I click on that, it opens up this window and I can give it a name, leave everything default. I'm just gonna call it uh, scattered trash 01, maybe instant static mesh underscore scattered trash 01, and I'll click select. Now it's gonna create a blueprint with all that trash scattered as instant static meshes in their locations. Now in here, you can fine tune things. You can click on individual ones. And if you want to, you can go in here and modify their locations and their transforms. So I can click here on the individual items and go in here to instances and see all the instances and look at the transforms and change those. But I'll have to stop simulating. I'm still simulating. so. What we're going to do is I'll minimize this for now, stop simulating, everything gets removed, scene gets cleared, but I still have this asset here, this instant static mesh scattered trash. And if I open that up, here it is, it retained that. And if I want to, I could go in here and fine tune the location of these or delete ones that are problematic. But really, now we have them in here. And if I want to place them in my scene at that exact location, I just drag that blueprint that I created, drop it in the scene, reset its location transforms, and there it is. And it's all just one piece now that I can take, and if I want to, I can move it around or just zero it out, and it's exactly in the location that you scattered it at. And that's really it. Now we have a tool that we can scatter objects throughout our scene very easily with physics and save it to an instant static mesh blueprint. If you like this video, if you learned something new, don't forget to like, subscribe, press the bell button to be notified of future videos. And if you're part of the Patreon, you can also get access to the PDF for this video, which will cover all the steps plus a bit more information available for those Patreon members. And if you want to support me in creating these videos, check out the Patreon for a limited time only, the Vertex Roll is limited to 250 Patreons. And once that's filled up to get the exact same content, it will be $5 a month. And for $2 a month, what you're getting is you're supporting me to create more videos. You're also getting access to a library of these PDFs. And currently there's about 40 of them. And that will just keep being added to as I create more and more videos. And there might be other perks in the future, but for now, that's kind of what you'll get. So check that out if you're interested and let me know also what tutorials, what videos you'd like to see next.